Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Tuesday's very special, um, more or less, Scout Comics takeover of the Collective Spotlight Show. Uh, our very first guest is uh, about a book that we have been super excited about here in the store for a while. We've got the writer and artist of Phantom Star Killer. We got Joe and Pete. How are you guys doing today? Great. Good. Having fun. Awesome, awesome. So uh, we are now officially one day away from the release of Phantom Star Killer officially on shelves. I know you guys kind of already, or at least Joe, I know you had a chance to go and do the circuit, do some signings already last weekend. But uh, tell us a little Peter bit. Peter was actually here for it as well. Oh, so so. Both of you guys got to do it. Awesome. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Phantom Star Killer. I've had a chance to read the Ashcan, haven't had a chance to read this just yet. But this is a black caravan book from Scout, which uh, is kind of uh, foreign to some people. So tell us a little bit about that. Do you want to start, Peter, or do you want me to go? Um, why don't you tell him a little bit about black caravan, and then I'll jump in. Cool. So uh, black caravan is the new Scout imprint. That's uh, public. The two publishers for it are myself and Rich Woodall. Okay. And we are doing a sci-fi horror imprint uh, dealing with a little, some of the stuff we're doing is a little bit more adult than what Scout would typically do. This book that we're going to be talking about in a minute, Phantom Starkiller is not one of those titles, okay. but it falls into the horror sci-fi elements that um, we'll be bringing to the table for Black Caravan. And um, not only is Starkiller coming out tomorrow, uh, it's the launch of our first books for Black Caravan. So it's Electric Black Presents number one. And Phantom Star Killer number one. Yes, that's the other book. And this one actually and is you and Rich, right? We're on this one? We're, we're the writers. We do the artwork for it. I did that cover. And then um, the we have Walter Osley of, uh, yeah, that's the Scout Shop exclusive. Yes, sir. Um, we support Scout heavily here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, the interior artwork is done by both Walter Osley and um, Paul Pelletier, who has like a huge career. Um, yeah. He's worked on Wolverine and Justice League. And all, right now I think he's on Batgirl and he does those Walmart Batman comics and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Walter does Metal Shark Bro, Hacksaw through uh, Webtoons. And uh, both awesome artists have completely different styles and it looks great together inside the book. And uh, it's got more of an anthology feel than the regular only electric black series does. Okay. So it, Halloween creepy stuff. We got Phantom Star Killer as well, which is the big book coming out tomorrow. And we're not just releasing the book. Uh, Peter is releasing two new toys uh, with the release of issue one. So it's going to be an orange uh, Count Draco knuckle duster. Similar to this one here. I should have brought props with me. And, <laughs> I'm trying to look. I know uh, I can in, in the samples. Yeah, there, there's an ad that Peter made in the uh, the back of issue one. So when you get your issue one, um, you'll be able to uh, find the ad for these toys that are coming out as well. And the other one is a Maba of Phantom Star Killer, but it's going to be in, in the uh, Black Caravan colors, which are cyan magenta and black and it glows in the dark wow so yeah both of these in those colorways will be available starting tomorrow through scout that is awesome and and i guess that that's perfect uh, so to pete um yeah. pete, i've actually the one of the reasons that we've been excited about phantom circular from the store is when we looked at the ash can and we saw the action figures and steven uh my other co-worker here in the store loves action figures and everything like that uh, how did that come about to be able to, to kind of package together comics and figures and everything like that, man? These things are awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. So I've been making hand making action figures for the last 15 years uh, independently on my own. And uh, this the character debuted in 2013 <laughs> at uh, San Diego Comic Con. And uh, I've just been making versions of the figure and different versions of Starkiller ever since 2013. And Super 7, which is a San Francisco-based toy company, approached me in, you know, like 2016 or so. And I've been friends with those guys for a long time. And we uh, 
talked about licensing the character to Super 7 and uh, started working on it in uh, the spring of 2017. And then 2018, the figure debuted at New York Comic Con. And that's kind of, you know, <laughs> what, what happened with the action figures. And then the comic, uh, me and Joe have been working together uh probably for three or four years now on different packaging art and just collaborating on different projects and when joe got the opportunity uh through scout to do publish books under black caravan he approached me with the idea of doing a star killer comic and yeah so that's and that's kind of where that started <laughs> that's awesome so it literally originated as the figure and has made its way into now being a published comic book through Scout, and not just Scout. It's it's kind of Black right, Caravan so now, as well. Now the issue yeah. isn't a first appearance. I got to get the original action figure. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. That's, that's if you follow if figure. you follow Peter on uh, on Instagram, uh, he does toy drops every once in a while, and sometimes people get opportunities to grab an original. Uh, Starkiller, like the ones that he produced back in 2012. I don't know if you're going to be doing that any time it. soon, but I'm watching. Dude, but, I'm watching. Yeah. So, um, Phantom Starkiller, man. Let's let's get back to the book. Um, tell me yeah. a little bit about this character and this world. Um, the covers, the art on all of your covers. I mean, we got we got um, Christian Debari exclusive. We've got the Scout Box exclusive. That's Rich Woodall's. It's really cool. <laughs> we also grabbed a couple of the uh, NYCC covers, too. But the art, no matter who does them, the art in this book is amazing. So talk to me a little bit about what it's been like to work on this and what um, what fans of what may enjoy this book. To me, I've been, I've been thinking that this guy, he kind of seems like a bounty hunter. He's a cosmic BA, you know what I'm saying? So tell me if I'm, I'm a little bit right here on what I've gotten already. Yeah, um, so he's the cosmic ghoul warrior. Um, he's kind of an undead, resurrected, like you said, badass kind of bounty hunter that goes around doing missions for um, his master, Count Draco Knuckle Duster. And uh, yeah, it was a great project to work on. I had a lot of fun working on it with Joe. Um, all the artists rocked it on the covers. Um, yeah, he seems to be like a, a character that a lot of different artists vibe with. And, yeah, you know, they uh, see, you know, it's kind of the ins he's like the artist uh, character, I suppose, because a lot of different dudes are always playing with it and, you know, having some fun with the character, which I enjoy, which and, and comics is a great medium for uh, awesome for that, because then it gives the opportunity for other dudes to do covers and stuff like that. Yeah, the character just really speaks to you when you first see it. And uh, so I saw the the figure when Peter first released it, you know, uh, online. And of course, I missed it because how many did you make of the original one, Peter? Uh, 25 back in 2013. Wow. Yeah, so it was super limited. And I was like, that's I, like for the life of me, I didn't understand what um, was going on with the independent toy scene mm -hmm. where you would make these limited batch toys that are custom. And uh, so I, I needed to figure out more about it. So I started doing some, you know, deep dive on internet and like checking out like the different star killer colorways and all this other stuff. Eventually I just drew a picture of it cause I loved it so much. And that's when me and Peter started talking. And then he started telling me about the story that goes behind this character. And I was like, oh shit, you know, there's like a whole mythos here. And when, it, like he said, when Black Caravan was, when I was given the opportunity to start publishing books through them, I was like, this is the this is the chance that we could have to start telling Star Killer's stories. Uh, because he's got like this crazy yeah, if if Peter will chew up like two hours of his day like <laughs> going through like all sorts of the crazy stuff that's gonna happen in the books. These the the one shot that we have here with uh Phantom Star Killer is an introduction to the character for everybody that's outside of the toy industry that hasn't obtained okay. one of those originals. Okay. There's a little story on the card back and we basically covered a good portion of that card back story. Not all of it, but some of it, uh, the important beats are there. Yeah. And we're gonna continue doing that with Peter's other creations like Count Draco Knuckle Buster, which will, you saw the ad for that in the back yeah. of Richie One. That'll be coming out next year. 
Um, awesome. And so, so is, that, is that the plan that Phantom Star Killer? This is a one shot kind of origin of Phantom Star Killer. Then we'll get another one shot probably through Black Caravan. That'll be you know the Knuckle Buster. And is that kind of the plan that these will be uh, singular stories in the Phantom Star Killer universe? Well, I think the initial intention to introduce the, these characters to the world is to do that. Um, we have an idea of creating a larger, you know, ongoing series, but yeah. this is how we're going to start everybody off. Okay. And then once once we have these origin tales sort of out there and stuff, Peter can go and do this deeper dive into the universe that he's created. That's awesome. And, and Peter, I have to ask you, man, <laughs> where did the inspiration both um, both in terms of like the character background, but also in terms of the design. Where was the inspiration on Phantom Star Killer? Because I, as like kind of an old school He Man fan, I see a smidge a Skeletor in this guy. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> so what I did basically was kind of took George Lucas's recipe for how he created his universe by taking everything that was influential to him and in, in his upbringing and in his childhood and kind of throwing that all in a blender and then making like a pastiche of of something new. And uh, I just was trying to do that really, you know, it was like everything that I like and everything that was influential to me growing up and all the things that have influenced me in my life. I just kind of threw all those in a blender and then this is what came out really. And um, in, yeah. And I, in terms of coloring it and stuff like that for the color palettes. And I just looked up like the colors that are most attractive to, to men's eyes. Between ages 18 and 35 and started playing around with the palette and just all colors that would pop and you know uh yeah so smart man that's a smart move there peter yeah. <laughs> so so tell me then um what were some of those influences you put into the blender there yeah so it'd be like star wars he-man skeletor obviously the black cauldron which is my favorite disney movie of all time oh that's a classic that's a yeah. classic so there's a lot of like horn, horned king in there more so than Skeletor, I, I guess. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, you know, if, if uh, Skeletor and Obi-Wan had a baby, you know, it'd be kind of Phantom Star Killer. That's, that's awesome. And, and so, uh, Joe, you mentioned it a little bit about how you just, once Black Caravan came about, you kind of just knew that Phantom Star Killer was something that you had to publish there. But you mentioned that, it's not as horror -y as most of the Black Caravan things, a little bit more sci-fi. What was it about this book that kind of just slapped you in the face and said, hey, we got to put, we got to get this out there? Or well, it's the sci-fi aspect of it and the, the whole idea that he is this cosmic ghoul warrior and, you know, he has supernatural powers and supernatural things happen to him. And uh, <clears throat> it is a pretty violent book. I don't know if you read through it all. There's a lot of death and I get to draw like melting skin and all sorts of cool <laughs> stuff, which which sort of falls into our whole black caravan theme. So while it's a while it's a solid PG-13, uh, there's no there's no nudity. Uh, I don't think there's a swear word in it. Anywhere. I, say, I don't think there's language like that. <laughs> yeah, we did that on purpose to make it so that kids could read this, too. But it is super violent. So okay. parents, uh, you know, you might want to flip through it first. I don't think it's that bad, but no, um, not the it's greatest like, marker for. Uh, it's like a little more violent. I hate comparing independent works to anything, really. I really do. Um, but it's kind of like a violent, you know, space opera in a way. Like, you yeah. know, yes, Star Wars is meant for all ages, so there aren't too much violence. Even when they get shot, you don't see anything. You guys don't do that. <laughs> yeah, there's a little more hacking and slashing than Star Wars has. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a scene where brains get blown out and stuff that's pretty graphic. I think that's uh, a, a sculptor that we know was flipping through it the other day while we were doing our signing. He goes, whoa. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that was, I wanted through. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the, so I showed, I showed a bunch of the cool covers. I did not show one cover on purpose. And it is the secret VHS cover. It's not so secret now because we have a few. No, here. we we've we've been talking about it today. Uh, I think Peter actually talked about it last week um, mm -hmm. online. But yeah, we wanted to let people know that if you go to your comic book shop, they might have one of those. Uh, good luck. I hope we you find couple. one. We have a couple, just because, like I said, we support Scout heavily, so we got enough that 
They sent us a couple, but tell me a little bit about how exciting it was because uh, Scout publishes tons of books weekly, monthly. Um, they've only done one other secret VHS variant. So how how did it feel to be told that you guys are getting one of these cool secret VHS variants, which I think works perfectly for a horror uh, sci-fi book? Yeah, uh, what happened was we had actually submitted uh, for a one in 10 variant okay. at one point and that, that fell apart. Uh, for whatever reason. So we turned lemons into lemonade. Uh, we do that a lot at Scout. If there's a mistake, we make it work in our favor. And uh, James Hake, it, it, the whole VHS variant thing is his uh, baby in concept. Mm -hmm. So uh, he did it with Everglade Angels. And yeah. when he when he saw the interiors for Starkiller, he was like, oh man, you know, this is gonna be a huge book. And um, he brought it up to us being like, Hey, let's do this secret VHS thing since we don't have a one in 10. And mm -hmm. then it was a no brainer. And you see the result. We, we made this secret variant. There were only a couple hundred of those put out at, um, put out through distribution. Uh, if your shop ordered more than just five copies, if they got like 10 or 20 copies, they likely got one of those. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we, we to, um, because we're good friends with uh, David Byrne and a couple guys, they let they let us know a little bit. So you know, plus we knew we were having you guys on the show. So we have a ton of copies of all the covers of Phantom Star Killer, but this is definitely the most rarest one because we were not allowed to choose the numbers on this. This came to us, like we said, kind of as a surprise. But uh, I, I do want to point out to people. The first one that was done for Everglade Angels was was very simple, you know, because it was the very first one. What I love about this one is that they added all these stickers, the Brie Kind Rewind, you got a science fiction sticker. This one says that the cassette will melt if it's left in your car. I think these are all uh, awesome, nostalgic little things that, you know, and it even has the credits for you guys down there, just like on a movie post. Actually, look, it does say PG-13. There you go, Jeff. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to make sure everybody knew that it was, it's an appropriate book for kids, but adults should always look at what their children are looking at. That's, you know, I'm not their parent. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we've talked about the book a little bit. Like you said, it's a one shot kind of giving you that origin of Phantom Star Killer. There's more in this universe, but if people read this book and they end up really loving the character of Phantom Star Killer, what 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 do what can they get to further uh, cleanse that palette that they're looking for? And then what are, what is the future hold for maybe that character? So uh, Peter is the owner of this book. The future is entirely in his hands. So Peter, him. what is yeah. the future? <laughs> Uh, I mean, more toys. We've got tons of toys always coming out. If you follow Phantom Star Killer on Instagram or Killer Bootlegs on Instagram, I'm always, every week I have some kind of toy drop or merch drop or something. There's always merchandise coming out. I mean, the whole Phantom Star Killer IP really is backbone is merchandise and action figures. Um, we got more books coming out. Um, uh, there's a, so the comic me and Joe are going to be working on the knuckle duster one. And there's also a children's book that me and CP Wilson are going to be putting out under oh. uh, the scoot imprint that scout has. That's eight, for ages four to 12. And that's going to be like, a, you know, like those uh, good night, little Vader books, kind of those star Wars yeah, books that came out a handful of years ago. So is yours going to be featuring the phantom or characters? Yeah. from the phantom star yeah, Killer? It's, it's all phantom star killer. Little I, phantom I, star killer. First of all, that's awesome. And yeah. second of all, I don't know if that's exclusive, but I feel like that's the first I heard of this. And I think that's genius. And so yeah. we, um, in our store, we carry uh, in our kids section, little golden books, which mm -hmm. most of us are familiar uh, at some point in time mm -hmm. had, them. but they do them with comic characters. So now I think that's genius that you guys yeah. can do a scoot, which is scouts uh, all ages imprint that they're going to be doing. Uh, or actually, yeah, all ages that they're going to be doing in 2021. But I think that's perfect. And I think that's hilarious. And I can't wait for that, Peter. I really can't. Well, you know, a lot of the fans are around my age, your age, Joe's age. And we all have children. I mean, I do. Joe does. We have children. And, you know, the greatest thing is to be able to share your passions with your kids. And, you know, for people and fans around the world that are finding out about this character are already head over heels in love with this character. They're going to be able to share it. Uh, with their kids and you know hopefully their grandkids and many generations to come you know that is awesome so it's like you're really trying to build a character here 
that can go through the ages, you know, like, I mean, I can love Phantom Star Killer. I buy an uh, action figure. I can now give it to my kid, you know, whenever, I, you know, and things like that. That's what, and I really think that's awesome. You're kind of building what, you're building a comic universe, but you did it with the action figures first, which is yes. really awesome in in uh, the new millennium, really. I feel like that's 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 genius. And I mean, is it easy for you to be able to take this, since you already probably go to toy fairs and things like that, and to now go and have a comic book on your table and be able to, is it easy cross promotion, I guess, is the question I'm trying to ask? A hundred percent. Yeah, it's been the, the <laughs> I mean, Joe's smiling, but the boom over the last few months has been pretty crazy in that, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with the hype surrounding the comic. The comic should be coming out. Uh, figures just came out through Super 7. More figures. I mean, it's, you know, if there's people who are ready, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming. That is that is awesome. And I mean, like I said, we supported Phantom Star Killer so heavily. I think we literally ordered any cover that there was. There was the NYCC. There was... The Scout Box exclusive, which I'm super glad Scout even allowed us to get because as a retailer, we aren't ordering the Scout Box necessarily. And then we got the Web Store exclusive. I don't know. Is this glow in the dark, Joe? No, no. no. Okay. There is a glow in the dark cover. It's it's this one. This is the uh, only cover that me and Peter both did. Uh, oh. He colored it and then I illustrated it. And it's based, uh, Peter based the colors on the... Uh, the two figure colorways that I've done for him. Packaging so. art for him. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So guys, before I let you go, I just want to, um, I got another scout guy coming right after you guys got Brian Wickman from grit, but I, I just want to let our viewers know again, kind of give them that elevator pitch for phantom star killer. You know, um, if they're fans of, you know, this book or that book that they might like this, uh, the floor is yours as many as we got eight minutes really. So as long as you guys want it, but I really, uh, want you guys to just be able to, uh, talk about the book and express your passion for this right now, because we love the book here in store. We want our customers to, uh, enjoy it as much as it seems Peter has enjoyed creating this character. So please just tell us again, the elevator pitch and who you guys think. This yeah. Book thanks is. man. So elevator right, pitch. So yeah, as uh, children's of the eighties and nineties, <laughs> go ahead, go Peter. It, I'll let you go first. What? Because Joe's looking for something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I was going to say it's this is going to be one of the dopest new comics to hit hit this fall. Phantom Star Killer takes the '80s energy of Masters of the Universe, Kenner Star Wars, and blends it with a modern day science horror, sci-fi horror, awesome like indie fave Space Riders. So for uncounted millennia, the Crypto crystalline stone has remained lost to the blackness of space hidden amongst the stars. And as time passed, the galaxy slipped into greater peril. Thousands of star systems fell and worlds crumbled. Dark and ominous beings conspire from the shadows to possess its unlimited power and ability to resurrect a legion of deathless warriors. From the vastness of the unknown regions, regions whispers of his return have paralyzed all in fear. Phantom Starkiller, the cosmic ghoul warrior, must now unleash his inner darkness to carry out his master's wishes, all while plotting his revenge, for he cannot stop his interstellar rampage until the curse of the crypto-crystalline stone has been broken. Boom. Boom. <laughs> I love... I love how you... The term cosmic ghoul warrior... I don't know what it is about it. First of all, it it's perfectly describes the character, but it sounds so dang badass. I, I have to tell you, Pete. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Absolutely. And Joe, just just tell us again a little bit about Black Caravan because we also do have the Electric Black Presents, but you know the big the big baby is definitely Phantom Star Killer. But since you're working on both, tell us just a little bit about Black Caravan again. Yeah. So uh, Black Caravan, it's gonna. It, it's a new line from Scout. You're going to start seeing new titles coming out every month. We picked up Perhapanauts that's going to that used to come out through Dark Horse and Image. That uh, issue one for that comes out in November. In December, we have Electric Black presents issue two coming out, and then starting next year, we have a we have a whole slew of uh, new product coming out, such as Black Friday, 
Broken Souls Ballad, all this stuff you're going to see advertised in the back of our issues that you can find at your local comic book shops tomorrow. Uh, Electric Black Presents is definitely more of an R-rated book because of the level of violence and horror in it, and the language is pretty salty. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the story of cosmic madness and revenge, and it's uh, done in a very Tales from the Crypt uh, anthology style, uh, short two, two ten-page stories inside of there with bookends. Uh, again, with amazing artwork from the first people we've ever let draw uh, issues for us. Yeah, and there's there's a whole bunch of the stuff that's coming out through Black kind of Caravan Province. Of Madness is going to be a Cthulhu homage, uh, story H.P. Lovecraft homage uh, tale that's going to be about 100 pages long. Uh, half of it is original stories, and the other half is going to be uh, amazing artwork. Black Friday is about a superstore that's uh, basically sucked up a bunch of evil from all the Black Fridays, and then it unleashes it into the and, world. Uh, so, it, Gods of Brutality, I know we just got the mixtape in, so that's another one of your Black That is Rich Woodall's new uh, book that he's writing with uh, Mark Wessler, and it's about uh, a rock star that overdoses, ends up in hell, prays to Zeus and Odin, and their sons come to save him in hell. Oh man, I have to bust that open. I've been so busy this week, I haven't even gotten a chance to open our newest ash cans from Scout. But we do have Gods of Brutality already in. It's an ash can. They call it a demo mixtape, which I think is really cool. I think Scout's marketing and branding is really clever on how they do some things like that. So, um, so the guys, the book is Phantom Star Killer. We have Joe and Peter here. This book hits shelves tomorrow. Uh, you guys, I know, have been doing all the circuits with all the interviews, so thank you so much for making the time to come join us. Um, Peter, we will definitely be keeping an eye on the action figures as well, because I didn't realize how big that was into this whole lore and story, so congratulations with that, and we wish you the best of luck moving forward. Thank you. And uh, Joe, we can't wait to see what else Black Caravan brings out, man. I mean, uh, so far, it looks like this week you're going to uh, be two for two, I think. I hope so. And uh, just so everybody knows, uh, Electric Black Presents was vastly underordered. So good luck finding it. It will probably go to second print. Yeah, we have a couple of copies and we do have the uh, black and white web store exclusive as well. But those are very limited as well as the very coveted VHS cover. So if you have I've, already, I've seen people trying to flip it already. So. No, I, I believe it. I mean, there. Nobody knows about <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, these these can go for a pretty penny, and with a book as great as Phantom Star Killer, could go for even more. So, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, have a great release of the book. Can't wait to see what you guys do next. And best of luck, both of you guys. Thank Thanks you for so having much. us on, man. Absolutely, man. So that was Joe and Peter from Phantom Star Killer. Don't forget, we have couple of the secret VHS covers. Those will be with our incentives. We also have the Scout Box exclusive cover. We have the Web Store exclusive cover. And we have a couple of the New York Comic Con sold out exclusives. With that being said, I did say I had a Scout Comics double feature. And my next guest is the very well-bearded Brian Wickman. How are hey, you, Brian? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, man. So your book is great. We've actually had it here in the store on the shelf for a little bit now. Um, we've had three issues come out. But talk to us about this series, man. This guy, again, another BA, just absolutely badass. Uh, tell us a little bit about the world of Grit. Yeah, so Grit is what we've called a Southern Fried Sword and Sorcery story. Uh, it's kind of like the the deep south of your, your typical fantasy setting. Uh, it centers around a character named Barrow, who is an aging monster hunter who's very good at his job. He is there, covered in blood on the cover of the first issue. Um, and then his run-ins with a young, hot-tempered witch named Ari, who is less keen on chopping stuff up. So it is uh, kind of like your your tale of, you know, two two different heads collide, and, you know, you got to see. And now I, I have to ask, Brian, I have to. Yeah. Is there any ro romantic entanglement here? There is not. Okay. Um, no, no. Uh, I, I think that we've put sort of two um, 
asexual individuals hanging out together yeah. <laughs> um, who are both both uh, very career minded. Gotcha. So um, <laughs> you mentioned that he's a monster hunter. Tell me about what types of monsters exist in this world. What type of monsters is he fighting? Yeah. Uh, so um, the story begins with uh, a routine troll hunting job, um, which again, we, we sort of twist in our own sort of wacky deep South way. Uh, and then, I mean, over the course of even just the first issue, he encounters like a gang of goblin ruffians, a bunch of trolls, and then a cult that accidentally summons um, an arch demon made of blood. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a so, gory, messy book. So so it's kind of as if uh, my worst enemy took over my D and D campaign and just like made me go out, like kind of yeah. kind of. <laughs> Well, the first issue especially is just sort of like combat encounter after combat encounter because we had to sort of build this character up before we spent two more issues tearing him down. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm loving everything you're putting down. Tell me a little bit about your inspiration for this character. Are you a D&D &D player or Elder I am. Yeah, Like where did this come from? Yeah, I'm, I'm just a general fantasy nerd. Um, I love old pulp stuff, uh, like Conan stuff, especially Fafford and Grey Mouser by Fritz Leiber. I'm a huge fan of like Swords Against Darkness and all that stuff. Um, so this book is like my love letter to these characters, but also a critical essay on maybe why an old man with a sword is not great at problem solving. <laughs> so I, I sort of embrace both ends of it. Like it's fun to see an old man kill monsters, but also like get another job. <laughs> Like you you got to figure out your next thing, right? Yeah. And like, that's that's awesome. Um, the first, it, so you have three issues out, and if I'm not mistaken, that was the first story arc, correct? Yeah, yeah. Those three issues are a sort of concise, bloody slice of life um, that covers like one sort of job from start to finish over the course of just a couple days. So it's a very concise, like condensed story. Okay. And um. Did I hear you say on Twitter not too long ago that there is more in the world of grit in the works? Yeah. So uh, volume two will be out next year. Um, oh. We're doing three or four more issues. Um, we are going to mix things up a little bit. Um, Kevin Castanero was the artist on volume one, and he will be returning for one of those three issues. But we're yeah. um, doing essentially a series of three one shots that will explore other corners of this world. Perfect. Um, yeah, I put out a short through Multiversity a couple months back introducing um, one of Barrow's drinking buddies is this undead uh, like knight who just wanders town to town getting wine drunk and reveling uh, and talking about the good days. Uh, so we did, uh, we're doing a full one shot about that character because we just like thought he was such a fun, wacky guy. Yeah. Um, and then we're doing... Uh, that's Simon Kirks is the artist on that. And like I said, if you, if you dig around a multiversity, there's a four page short that we put up with that um, undead character. And then uh, Dylan Snook is joining us for a one shot that takes place um, a full year after the events of volume one. Oh, And then Kevin. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing a bit of a jump and then uh, Kevin will be back for another one shot that follows up on the events of the first volume. And we'll, and those one shots will be super self-contained. So like if you didn't yeah. read the, the time jump one, you can still read the one about the guy getting wine drunk pretty much. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that one doesn't really tie in at all. It's just sort of three fun little pulpy stories. Um, that's it's three shorts in that one. And then the time jump one is actually a really, really good jumping on point because huh? it views the events of volume one through the eyes of a goblin and what goes on after the fact. Um, Brian, I'm I'm not I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing <laughs> because your book, man. So your your grit is like if you're going through your um your D and D campaign, and then these one shots is like you're like, man, my NPCs are really cool, and I want yeah. to give NPCs the story. And I feel like that's I, I, like I'm like, man, I really wish I could do that with my campaign. Is literally what yeah. I'm <laughs> The so the, I I am like so in love with our revenant um, Andre Lapointe is his name and all of the art of him he is always like picking flowers or like polishing armor he's like a very just like aware of the aesthetics of being a zombie zombie in a fantasy world so he wants to like put his best face forward. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that started as a, a one-off joke from the first issue. There's a throwaway line at the end where um, 
the there's a farmer and a barkeep having a conversation there's there's sort of a throwaway joke about like the revenant in the wine cellar and i was like that's actually really weird and i should do something with that so we came up with who this revenant in the wine cellar was and now we're doing a book about him <laughs> but no that's that's awesome and and so talk to me a little bit um how so most people aren't lucky enough to when ideas come to them like that they get to actually put it on pen and pad and get a comic published about it how has has scout worked with you in the sense of continuing to build this world yeah so i i feel like we took a lot of strange like this is my first you know substantially published work i've done some self-published stuff in the past but scout was really nice about letting me take some risks on this series where like i said issue one is this hyper violent action comic and then issues two and three are not <laughs> um, and, and i think that it can feel like a little bit of a bait and switch, but it becomes this sort of sad story about an old man who's only good at one thing. Um, and that's, that's a cool thing that they let me do. And then when I, when I pitched volume two, you know, the response to the, the finale of volume one was sort of surprised because we had set up this hero and then his arc is not necessarily what people expected. And I wanted to sort of keep running with not, not taking the easy path with the story, which is why I'm jumping around between characters. And so I pitched these three like independent stories to scout for volume two. And um, I work pretty closely with like Charlie and David and then they were all for it. So I'm thankful that they let me kind of explore this weird world in this sort of scattered yeah. uh, fashion. It's unique. I mean, it's not, who is to say that it's the wrong way to do it. It's unique. And I mean, I'm so my follow-up question is going to be, um, so is there plans for like a volume three where you go back to him or is your time writing him kind of done? Uh, I mean, he pops back up in volume two. He's just not okay. really the central figure anymore. Um, I would argue by the end of volume one, he's barely the central figure because okay. you get to see how he sort of interacts with the world and how people interact with him. Um, even we set up very early on that folks have this sort of distrust of an old man who kills things for a living. Yeah, um, probably. Like even even if it's sort of a necessary evil, like an executioner is a very different job in a fantasy world or an exterminator rather. You know what's really funny, and I know they're watching out in the the lobby right now. This guy kind of looks like our store owner, Brendan. <laughs> like he kind of does, like minus the blood. Like I'm sure if we handed Brendan a machete <laughs> and like an axe, this would be Brendan. But I'm sure that they're gonna catch that out in the lobby in a second. They're gonna they're gonna come out here and beat me up. <laughs> but <laughs> I and we'll the... all see it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> So yeah, man. So this is your first uh, major published work. Then was great. Yeah. Before that, I did one uh, short comic uh, with a fantastic artist. <laughs> are you Are you getting <laughs> angry looks right now? But no, doesn't he look? He, he looks does. like Brendan like, a little bit. Oh, there's Brendan. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I know this is important. Let me see. Let me see. No, you gotta hold show on. him the book. Can I show you the book? It looks. If you was your hair that color back in the day? Yeah. It still is. It looks. It looks like. Oh yeah. It looks, oh, yeah. Oh, it's you. Okay. That's him. So, looks like Charlton Heston with the Planet of the Apes magazine. I'm gonna kind of ask them to redo that because they didn't. <laughs> Are you gonna sign this gonna for all of it. our customers? Then? Well, I've always been known as Grit. So <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was just looking at it as you were talking. I'm like. You know, it kind of looks like Brent. I love it. <laughs> That's so funny. But no, man. So, uh, oh my gosh. So that let's get back. Let me focus. Anyways, um, so Scout, we we support Scout very heavily. As you can tell, we had Phantom Star Killer on before. Um, I'm good friends with David Byrne, who's lo kind of local. He's Ormond Beach. We're here in uh, Altamont. But yeah. how did you get connected with uh, Scout to uh, do this book specifically? How did that go about? Uh, I had just read Long Lost. Okay. which they put out while well, way back. And that was my first scout book. And then around the same time I saw that they were going to be doing gut ghost. Uh, and I'm like, Enzo stuff is sick. And I've been like following his art for a long time. So I, it was just sort of like, I would happen to be working on this. I happened to be reading a bunch of their stuff at the time. So it was a cold pitch. Uh, you talked to Brendan back and forth a little bit, and then we wound up doing the book. That's awesome. So you, you pitched them great. That was what yep. you came to them with. Awesome. Yeah. So kind of how long in the making 
was this? Was the pitch? Was the character? Like I know some people say they they it's it's years, and some people say it was just a couple months. So for you, how what was that process? Uh, so Kevin and I started and stopped a couple times on the book. Uh, so from from like first email to on store shelves, like four years. Okay. Wow. Okay. And yeah. been, what did it finally feel like when you probably a got to hold your comps and then b once you saw it on store shelves? You know, <sighs> relieved um, <laughs> because you know stores were like shutting down as the book was going out for orders yeah. and stuff. So I was like, ah, never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for it to go better given the circumstances. <laughs> um, you know, all three issues sold out from the distributor on day one. Um, so yeah, I mean, issues one and two went to second printings. Scout still has plenty of stuff in their web store, so they're available, but um, yeah, yeah. I'm really happy with how it went and for the most part, pretty well received um yeah. Yeah. you know it's 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 a weird book that goes in directions yeah. that issue one doesn't lead you to believe it will so i'm glad people stuck with it no yeah yeah i actually totally just had somebody pick up an issue two uh yesterday so um but um another cool thing about the book to me is that uh you have something you did a three issue miniseries um or at least you know we call it a miniseries yeah um I feel like that's, especially for an independent book, that's kind of the perfect length. And because, you know, once you start, I know most big majority books do five issues, if not more. What yeah. did you think about that three issues for the arc? Did you, were you able to tell everything you wanted to in those three issues? Do you wish you would have had more? I, I mean, it was our choice and I'm, I'm glad that we did it because I, I like a condensed story. I like something I can like, you could sit and read the whole thing in one sitting, no problem. Um, I think in hindsight, if I were to do it again, I would give myself the breathing room of one more. Okay. Um, but that being said, I'm very happy with the story we told, you know, we hit all the marks that we wanted to. Um, I just think that as we got to spend more time with the characters and as I like, it's interesting because things are done before you start getting feedback from anyone. And yeah. then as I was like, hearing how people felt about the characters and especially the introduction of Ari, the witch in issue two, I was like, damn, I do wish we had 22 more pages to play with. Um, but Hey, now we have another volume to play with. So who knows? There you go. So um, as you mentioned, the web store uh, of Scout's web store uh, after issue one, and I, and I think they might've done it for issue one too, but I know for like issue two and three, they did web store exclusives for Korea. Mm -hmm. What was that feeling like that? Okay, not only are they publishing my book, they are giving me this web store exclusive cover that's a little bit more expensive, more sought after. Like, what was that like to get to get up there so quickly? Uh, mostly, it's exciting to be able to work with more of my friends in comics. Um, uh, I know the Scout arranges some of their variants themselves, but I like, you know, had a, a pool of people that I was like ready to work with and excited to work with. So I, I organized all of our variants. Um, I worked with some really exciting people. Art Yam Trakhanov did the one for issue one. Mm -hmm. um, he just did First Knife with Image, and everyone should read it because it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Uh, Art Yam Toplin did the one for issue three, which is super cool. Um, issue two, my good friend Alley Cat um, did it. Um, awesome. So you got to set up all three of the very, or all of yeah. the That's awesome. Yeah, and then like the second printing for um issue one is mark laszlo who's done like hellboy stuff in the past yeah yeah yeah. that's the one we actually um, have in store because we have nice. the second prints yeah yeah and then um the issue two second printing which is out next wednesday i think um is actually one of my oldest friends in comics uh Tayshaun dwyer did it for me that's so, awesome well yeah. apparently you're a well-connected guy in comics i'm actually trying to remember who it was but one of my guests either a week or two ago name dropped you um, I'm trying to think who it was. Might have been one of the man ca Mad Cave guys. Might have been Stony Williams. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Uh, have you talked yeah. to J Jared and I are friends? Jared. So it might have been Jared. Yeah. Actually, might have been Jared. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you you are well connected in the industry. How? Um, what's your background? Did you go to school for writing? Are you a literary background? Like, how did you I meet am, all the guys? I'm a librarian. <laughs> um, well, that's, 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 I can see that. Yeah. Um, as I stand here in my like death metal shirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, no, I just, I don't know. I I tell people when I like their stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's easy to be a nice, normal person on the internet, and that's my approach to making friends. Um, 
like Jared and I are good pals now. We we talk all the time. Um, dry foot rules. Everybody should buy that. The whole like mad dry the mad cave is. slate is amazing right now. Stargazer is cool. Coming out on the tomorrow. We have yeah. that. Well, that's on my pool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, they're they're killing it. Uh, mad no. cave is doing like cool cool stuff. So, like you know, on the DL, you know, DL. All the viewers can hear. It. Uh, Scout and Mad Cave are like the two independent publishers that we're, we've been working the closest with. Obviously, Image is the one we probably carry the most of, but that's typically like a hands-off process. But no, yeah. Scout and Mad Cave have done amazing things. That's why I keep booking Scout guests, as you can tell. But Brian, I have to ask you because now you mentioned to me you're a librarian, okay? But you're out here, you're looking metal, and then you've got this Southern Fried book. Are you from the South? Where did the Southern fried uh, like idea come from? Uh, mostly because I think, uh, so I'm from Baltimore, uh, born and raised. So no, um, I will not say that I'm from the South. <laughs> Depends who you ask, I guess, uh, but no. Um, but I do think that it is a setting that really becomes a character. Um, if you think about a book like, um, like something like Southern Bastards where like the setting itself is such an important layer and I, I would argue almost the villain of the first couple volumes is just like alabama <laughs> um, so yeah I, I think it's just an interesting lens through which to view fantasy and something i hadn't seen before the closest thing there's a great fantasy book um called kings of the wild by nicholas eames and he does this sort of like lived in dirty but really fun fantasy world so um yeah it's just it felt like an unexplored corner and what like i know it's a fantasy world is it kind of a period piece too i mean is it i know it's fantasy but like are these because like i mean his clothes kind of scream a little bit older america to me did, did you go into it with that or is this just the way the fantasy world that you had came about so i stylistically i left a lot of it up to kevin he and i bounced things around a lot and he did sort of land on this almost like 1920s style for some of the like character designs yeah um which which i really like like there's a guy in the last issue that's wearing a bolo tie um <laughs> so like we're cool with the like historical anachronisms um like you you don't see a dude in a bolo tie in middle earth but yeah um, <laughs> I mean, and, and, you know like you a lot of a bolo tie <laughs> i'm not gonna I, say anything yeah why not um yeah so so now we sort of just like embraced a style and ran with it like we don't get into like the tech of the world or anything um but I, I think it just it works to create an atmosphere it's it's a book that doesn't tell you a whole lot about the world it just kind of lets you see what we've built yeah. um there's not a lot of exposition there's there, in issue one barely has dialogue frankly um so yeah, it's it's sort of just a show and tell of yeah. these yeah. ideas that we wanted to cram in. What I what I love, and I know you're the writer, so like obviously, like you said, Kevin kind of had got to do his thing. But man, did he draw some of these monsters really well? I will say that, like, <laughs> as I'm flipping through and I'm looking at the monsters, um, the, for lack of a better term, it's gritty. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would argue it's gooey. Yeah. Um, oh, actually. <laughs> Just one last um before i let you kind of i'm gonna give you the last couple minutes to kind of just pitch the book and get uh sure. get, you know get, but if i'm not mistaken i remember when grit first came out this is a couple months ago now grit first came out and there was a comic store on twitter that said a very very elderly woman came to the <sighs> store asking for grit and they weren't sure if she knew what she was asking for or not but they sold it to her and then she came back saying she loved it am i yeah. correct the story yes. um and you always see these threads on Twitter. That's like, how do you know you made it in comics? It's like, well, when a 90 year old woman buys your book from a coffee shop. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, damn. Yeah, shout out to Pulp 716 up in uh, Buffalo do a lot of, they're also super supportive of um, indie pubs. And apparently, so they do a lot of like drink combos because it's a coffee shop with new releases. And I talked to them a little bit because I had to get the scoop on this weird, weird situation. And every time they do a combo, she buys the drink in the book, no matter what they are. And I guess she had seen them post about this one on Facebook. So, um, she yeah. liked it. 
She what? liked it. What a cute little picture that was. Yeah, no, I remember. <laughs> and that was the moment I said, oh, man, I don't have this book in the store yet. If this 90-year-old, what, like, I have to have it in the store. If this 90-year-old woman loved it, like, who's not going to look? But, yeah, I, I had to, like, think for a second. I'm like, this either is or isn't his book. So I was going 50-50 on that. But that's – what was that like to hear that? Like, like you said, it's that moment where you made it in comic. <laughs> it was literally your first published work. and yeah. I, man, I don't know. It's it's funny to hear what people have to say about stuff. It's uh, it's it's been an interesting ride seeing people's reactions. Because again, I I did sort of like bait and switch people into a sad sad fantasy world. Um, it's still funny. Like we it's we like set out to do to embrace sort of like the weirdness of a pulp fantasy. Like there's so much stupid stuff in fantasy. It's just dumb and funny by by virtue of existing. So we really wanted to run with that. Like one of my favorite scenes is Ari, the, the witch talks to some birds and the birds have personalities that people would not expect these bluebirds to have. Um, but like, ultimately if we're, you know, making them out to be these sentient things that can have a conversation with a person, why wouldn't they have rich lives and yeah. personalities and dialects? So we've embraced like the dumb stuff. I mean, you said you're like a tabletop D&D guy. Like talking with animals is funnier when the animal is like a redneck. You're literally like the ideal dungeon master for my... <laughs> I'm just literally sitting here. I'm like, so what do I have to pay Brian to come D&D? Like, you know, do my D&D campaign. Because you're giving the birds, like I said, you're giving the NPCs voices in a yeah. lot of scenarios, which is awesome. That's the fun part. Yeah. Here, so, I, can, I can show this off to you since you're a DD and d guy. I do have a Barrow miniature. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, did you have that commissioned or did you paint that yourself? Did you do that yourself? I, I painted that, um, but I worked with a sculptor. Um, here's, I, I've talked a little on Twitter, but uh, Grit will be coming to Kickstarter at some point. Okay. And uh, we are actually doing a run of pewter miniatures. So. Awesome. That'll be cool. Yeah. I think Grit would be awesome for like a, a small D and D campaign. I mean, honestly, I might read the book and then give my DM the books and be like, Hey, uh, can you make something fun of this? Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention, um, they did a New York comic con exclusive of your book. Yeah. Yeah. How um, did that feel to like, you know, be one of the four, I think they only selected four books for that. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Um, I I actually have the cover art is is right behind me. I'll, I'll tip it up here. But, hey, uh, there it is. <laughs> um, getting a few here in store too. But yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got there's my Jeff Lemire up ne right next to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So um, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. But yeah, super super cool. Um, I love um, these. I, I guess they're calling them vegan covers now. Um, <laughs> I can get with that. Okay. I'm a vegetarian. It's fine. I get it. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's rad. I love full art stuff. Um, also Kevin, Kevin's work is just so nice. And um, it, it was sort of like, again, that cover has existed for probably three and a half years at this point. Um, so it was really cool to get just like a nice full art release for it. Um, kind of like retirement. That's the retirement of that art in a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the sending off for it. Virgin variant, like here we go. <laughs> it's we've had so many issue one, especially. I think it's had like six variants for one mm -hmm. reason or another at this point. Um, Comic Book Shopping Network did that Goran Gligovic one, and yep. if you want a D and D art, look at him. <laughs> um, that dude does killer stuff. He's got a book on Kickstarter right now. Uh, Company of Eagles, uh, super oh. super cool, anti colonialist horror book. Awesome. Yeah. So. Tell, uh, you mentioned that Grit is coming to Kickstart. Can you give us any more details? Or like, is there something yeah. Uh, so we're going to be doing a special edition of the first issue of Volume 2. Um, so I teased it a little bit online. It's called The Ballad of the Bloom Knight, and it's all about uh, Andre Lapointe, the Undead Knight. Um, so it's going to collect that multiversity short, The Cellar, and then the three additional shorts. And um, it'll have a, an exclusive cover, and we'll probably do some pinups with it. Um, it's also going to be the only chance for people to order the Barra miniature if they want to. Cool. That's awesome. Well, we'll definitely keep us informed on that so that we can yeah. get that for the store too. We'll do. Um, I, just like I did with the other guys, we got about seven minutes left. The floor is yours. He cool. is Brian Wickman. His book is grit. And you got to give them, you know, the, more than an elevator pitch, but, you know, give our fans, tell them uh, what the book is, why they might like it. And yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, grit is Southern fried sword and sorcery. 
it is uh, about an aging monster hunter who is very good at his job and his run-ins with a witch who does wish that he would stop cutting stuff up. Um, it is funny and it is bloody and it is an action packed book with a couple of laughs and a whole lot of heart and um, it might make you think a little bit about pulp heroes and why maybe they're not the best role models. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. If you like fantasy stuff, if you like BPRD or Hellboy or Headlopper, uh, it kind of falls right in there. Uh, I think fans of Rumble would really like it. It's got that same sort of sense of humor and grotesque art style sometimes. Um, yeah, man, if you like fantasy stuff, check it out. Yeah, if you're a D&D guy, like if you uh, honestly, if uh, our fans here at the store that have maybe read the D&D books, um, you may like this as well. Uh, for the people that are in the comics related really madness group, uh, if you liked Blood of Gods by Eric Dominguez, I think you'll definitely like this book. Uh, so yeah, um, Brian, thank you so much for being on the show, man. The book is great. We have issues one, two, and three. We also have New York Comic Con exclusive cover for number one. And he has been Brian Wakeman. He has more stuff in the world of grit to come. And thank you so much for being here, man. Best of luck with volume two. Thanks, and man. Can't wait to see what else you put out in this world, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. You have a good one, man. Take it yeah, easy. Man. See ya. <clears throat> so, guys, this has been the Collective Spotlight, episode 14, right here in the Collective Sinestro Core Studio. Uh, we want to thank uh, Brian Wickman right there, who we just had on. From Grit, we have issues one, two, and three. You can read the full story. We've got tons of covers. Check out Grit here in store. And I want to give a special shout out to Joe and Peter from Phantom Star Killer. We've got plenty of Phantom Star Killer here in store. We got the A cover. We got the Seeker cover. We've got New York Comic Con covers. Swing by. Get yourself your Phantom Star Killer one shot. If you're a fan of Boba Fett, Bounty Hunters, if you're a fan of uh masters of the universe if you're a fan of kicking ass in space you will like this book i have been danny morales this has been steven spivak kicking ass in space guys and this has been brendan boyle <laughs> and this is the collective spotlight join us tomorrow 5 30 we got tons of goodies plus some others and don't forget next week harley quinn take it easy everybody